Welcome to the Motor Mouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And this is our top five compact SUVs. Now, before we get into anything else, Andrea, mm -hmm. people have to subscribe, right? You got to subscribe, hit that notification bell as well, and follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. I put a sneak peek of what's coming up on the channel every week. Okay, so we're not ranking them from five to number one. Nope. And the reason for this is that what's right for one person, maybe it's space, might not be right for the other person. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want handling and power. Mm -hmm. So these are our top five. And at the end, we do something extra, right? Yes, we've got some honorable mentions, some vehicles that didn't make the top five list, but are definitely worth mentioning. All right, let's get into it. We're doing these in alphabetical order. First up is the Honda CRV. It's brand new. And we really think that Honda has done a great job with it. Let's go through some of the pros and cons. Yeah, the interior is definitely much, much better than the previous model. They've used this interior in other products. Some might complain that while well, they're co copying pasting from car to car, uh, we kind of think that it's good in one car. It certainly is good in the CRV. And this is the Swiss Army knife of SUVs. It does a lot of things really well. Well, I really like the handling. It's a lot smoother than the outgoing model. Model. The cabin is quieter as well, and it's spacious. It's bigger. So if you're a family of four or five, whether you're still using car seats or you've got strollers for the cargo area, you'll find it to be really good. All right. What else is good is the fact that it was available previously in the United States as a hybrid model, mm -hmm. but wasn't available in the Canadian market. So with this brand new version, they've introduced a hybrid into the Canadian market. The problem with it is, and now we start mm -hmm. to get into the negatives. The price of the CRV is now moved up, especially in Canada. In the US, it's quite competitive. Mm -hmm. And then when you add in the hybrid, the price really is expensive. The top model hybrid is like $52,000. Mm -hmm. It's it's a bit mind-boggling that that's what they're charging for a CRV. In general, you are paying more for a Honda these days. They are charging a premium. Another con of the CRV is that it is missing some features. This is a brand new model and it is missing ventilated front seats and a panoramic sunroof, which many of its competitors offer. When it comes to the hybrid, when the CRV was first released in Canada, there was only one trim. I applaud Honda for adding a second, but it's still over $48,000 Canadian for that base model. In the US, you have three hybrid trims, so it's a lot more competitive. We also found that we didn't quite get the EPA numbers for the hybrid model for fuel economy. So that was a bit of a disappointment, but here's the good news about the CRV at a time where hybrids and plug-in hybrids are so popular and the wait times are long, you can get a CRV. All right, let's get into the specs of the CRV. The Honda CRV has two powertrain options. The gas model has a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder matched to a CVT, 190 horsepower and 179 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. The hybrid has a two liter four cylinder matched to an eCVT, a combined 204 horsepower, standard all wheel drive in Canada, front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available in the US. Here's the price range. We'll start with Canada, then flip to the United States. The gas model starts at just over $37,000, and the most expensive model is $46,500. The hybrid, as we mentioned, is spendy. It starts at over $48,000 in Canada, and is almost $52,000 for the top trim. Here's the price range for the United States. The base model starts at $29,500 and goes up to $34,500. The hybrid model starts at just under $34,000. $34,000, and the most expensive model is just under $40,000 US. For fuel economy, the gas model gets 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 7.6 on the highway. That's 27 miles per gallon city and 32 miles per gallon highway. The hybrid gets 6 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 6.9 on the highway. That's 40 miles per gallon city, 34 miles per gallon highway. Okay, so in alphabetical order, the next one up is the Hyundai Tucson. And just like the CRV, it's available as gas and hybrid, even a plug-in model. And it's a large one, just like the CRV, but it has some extra elements going for it. When Andrea's number one thing is how quiet it is. It's amazing. The Hyundai Tucson 
offers such a quiet ride. The cabin is so insulated. I have not been in a hybrid except for the Kia Sportage or Sportage in the US that is that quiet. Hyundai has done such a wonderful job. Zach mentioned it's spacious. It has lots of tech. The cabin is roomy, the seats are comfortable, and there's also plenty of features. So it has a unique look, much like its Kia cousin. When it first came out, a bit polarizing. I mm -hmm. think now it's been out for a few years. People are kind of used to the design. Mm -hmm. And on the inside, it has a very clean, screen-centric design. Other than the screens, there's not a lot going on. No, it definitely is clean. The only thing I don't like, and this is a con of the Tucson, is there is a lot of piano black inside. Um, I think that they could do a better job with that. We recently drove the Hyundai Elantra Hybrid and they've used some cloth materials, especially on the doors. And I think that that would be a nice addition to the Tucson. Also, uh, sneak peek, the next one is the Kia version. And mm. I think that they do a better job with their dash. It looks a little more upscale. So yes, that super clean screen scented look on the Hyundai is nice, mm -hmm. but I think the Kia is maybe a little bit nicer. The other thing is Andrea, it's a negative. Uh, and this is something Hyundai and Kia both have to address is yeah. the new screen in the Tucson is a standard large screen and it is embedded with navigation because it has navigation. There's no wireless Apple or Android. No. That's really an omission in this day and age for 2024. That should be in there. Another problem with the Tucson gas model in Canada is that it's missing some features like driver's seat memory, a power passenger seat, a power lift gate. In the U.S., those features are included, but in Canada, you've got to move up to the hybrid or to the plug-in hybrid to get it. Another thing about the plug-in hybrid is that it offers great range, not as much as the RAV4 plug-in hybrid, uh, but it does a pretty good job and it qualifies for the $5,000 federal rebate in Canada as well for that plug-in hybrid. So I think the overall package of the Tucson is that it's a nice vehicle. Unfortunately, wait times for the hybrid and plug-in hybrid are there. I'm hearing up to a year, in some cases, a year and a half for it. It's successful and that's why people are waiting for it. I like that Hyundai is pushing forward with electrification and they offer a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. Not everybody is ready for a full electric vehicle. All right, so let's get into all of the specs on the Tucson. The Tucson gas model has a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine with an eight speed automatic transmission, 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. The hybrid, a 1.6 liter turbocharged hybrid powertrain paired to a six speed automatic transmission, a combined 226 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, standard all wheel drive. The plug-in hybrid has the same 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It gets a combined 261 horsepower, standard all-wheel drive, and the Tucson has 53 kilometers, 33 miles of EV range. Here's the price range for Canada, the U.S. in just a second. The gas model starts at just under $37,000 and goes to just over $39,000. The hybrid, just over $43,000, and the top model, $46,500. And the plug-in is $52,000 Canadian. In the United States, the price starts at $27,000 for the gas model and goes to $36,500. The hybrid from $32,000 to $39,500. And the plug-in from $38,500 to just over $45,000. Here's the fuel economy for the gas model. 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, eight on the highway. That's 23 miles per gallon city, 29 miles per gallon highway. For the hybrid, it's 6.3 liters per 100 kilometer city, 6.6 .6 on the highway. That's 37 miles per gallon city, 36 miles per gallon highway. The PHEV gets a combined 2.9 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers or 80 miles per gallon equivalent. Up next is the Kia Sportage. It's got three powertrain options, just like the Tucson, a gas hybrid and plug-in hybrid. Uh, north of the border, it's called Sportage. 
maybe sounds a little French. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, this is a, uh, the cousin to the vehicle we just looked at, which is the Tucson. Mm -hmm. And so they start out with the basic platform and the same basic drivetrain, and then Kia and Hyundai run away and do their design thing. And that's what you're gonna notice, is the Kia has a quite different design philosophy mm -hmm. than the Hyundai, especially on the inside for me, Andrea. I think the dashboard and the layout of this Kia is more my style. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the Tucson. I just like this better. I think that the Kia just looks a little bit more modern. It's cleaner. You know, the screen is um, looks really nice across the dash from the digital driver display to the touch screen. I think that Kia's done a really nice job. I like that you can toggle back and forth between the HVAC controls and the infotainment, and you can put it actually on the one that you like, so it stays there. Um, I think it's great. It's loaded with tech. It's comfortable. I like the different interior color options that are offered on the Sportage. Um, overall, it's a good product. Okay, what was polarizing, just like the Tucson, was the design when it first came out, mm -hmm. even more polarizing than the Hyundai. And it's those boomerang headlamps and a futuristic looking design mm -hmm. that now that it's been on the road for a while, I'm kind of used to it. Uh, one thing we didn't mention on the Hyundai, and the same thing is true for the Kia, is the rear wiper is hidden under the top valance, mm -hmm. which is a nice design feature, just makes the vehicle look clean. Some cons, I think that the polarizing look, um, although it's unique and you could look at as a as a pro, it's also a con. Some people find that it is just, too much of an extreme look for an SUV. But same thing, the CRV, the Tucson, and this Kia, all are nice size vehicles. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they're on our top five list, very easy to use for a family. Plenty yeah. of space in the back seat for adults and kids. Cargo area is very useful. So as a package, an overall package, it fulfills a lot of needs, gas, Hybrid, plug-in, you can get it all. Yeah. The gas model has a 2.5 liter four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. The hybrid has a 1.6 liter turbocharged hybrid powertrain with 227 horsepower, standard all wheel drive in Canada. In the US, front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. The plug-in hybrid has a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder with a six speed automatic transmission, a combined 261 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. It has 55 kilometers, 34 miles of range. Here's the price range for Canada, the US in just a second. The gas model starts at $32,500 and goes to just over $45,000. The hybrid starts at $39,500 and goes to $46,000. And the plug-in hybrid, $48,500 to just under $52,000. In the United States, the gas model starts at $27,000 and goes to just under $38,000. The hybrid, $27,500 to $36,500. And the plug-in hybrid, $38,500 to just over $43,000. Here's the fuel economy for the base gas model. 10.4 liters per 100 kilometer city, 8.5 on the highway. That's 23 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. The hybrid is 6.1 liters per 100 kilometer city, 6.3 on the highway. That's 38 miles per gallon city, 37 miles per gallon highway. The PHEV has a combined 2.8 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers. That's 84 miles per gallon equivalent. Don't forget to stick around for our honorable mentions at the end of this video. All right, some people are going to go, wait, what? Where's my favorite? Mm -hmm. Well, it might be in honorable mentions, and we'll tell you why it didn't make the list. Okay, what's up next in alphabetical order? Well, the Mitsubishi Outlander, two powertrain options, a gas model and a plug-in hybrid. This is a seven-passenger vehicle with a third row, which makes it quite unique, but best for small children. Only for small children. <laughs> I wouldn't put my mother-in-law back there. Like it's Jack tiny. Jack and his mother in law. Yeah, it's tiny. The only other vehicle in this class that mm -hmm. has an available, not standard, third row is the Volkswagen Tiguan. You can get the third row added for not too much yeah. money, but Mitsubishi has included it on 
all trims, yeah. gas or plug-in hybrid, which is new for this model. They didn't have it in the plug-in and now it's available. Some pros of the Mitsubishi Outlander, spacious, of course. On the higher trims, the interior actually feels quite upscale. There's a variety of different interior color options. The tech is good. The safety features are also very good. And the plug-in hybrid range is pretty close to the RAV4 Prime, which is the leader in the non-luxury category. So you're seeing a trend here. A lot of the vehicles that we've chosen have some kind of electrified yeah. or hybrid option. And that's a big reason why the Outlander is on this list is it has very good um, plug-in hybrid range. It's not too expensive. As Andrea mentioned, lots of different color combinations. Many different trims are sold as mm -hmm. well. And the vehicle is... Um, I would say the gas model is more budget friendly, yeah. but boy, it doesn't have much power and the PHEV makes up for that. Yeah, I think that's a big con with the gas model when you're on the highway and you're accelerating. It's the passing power, especially if you're going up a hill, you're going to find that it struggles. The plug-in hybrid, totally different. I mean, with that electric motor, it makes such a huge difference in um, the Outlander. So. For me personally, if I had the budget for the plug-in hybrid, I would probably go for that model okay. over the gas model. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little riddle here, Andrea. Mm -hmm. If the PHEV was not available, mm -hmm. would this be on our list? No. No. It's on the list because it, it because of the PHEV. And because the plug-in hybrid is excellent. Another con, though, of the plug-in hybrid is when the battery is depleted, the fuel economy is a little bit high, higher than its competitors. Um, that are also plug-in hybrid. So I think for some people who own the Outlander plug-in hybrid, that is really their only disappointment. Otherwise, I hear how much they absolutely love it. All right, let's get into the fuel economy and more. The gas model has a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine matched to a CVT with super all-wheel control, 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. The plug-in hybrid, a 2.4 liter four-cylinder Atkinson cycle gas engine with a twin motor PHEV system, a one-speed transmission with a combined 248 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Standard super all-wheel control, and it gets 61 kilometers, 38 miles of EV range. Here's the price range for Canada. We'll do the U.S. in a second. The gas model starts at just over $34,000, and the most expensive model is $44,500. The PHEV starts at $48,000, and the most expensive one is $58,000. In the United States, the gas model starts at just over $28,000, and the most expensive model is $36,500. The plug-in starts at just over $40,000 and goes to $46,000. Here's the fuel economy. Economy for the gas model, 9.7 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7.9 on the highway. That's 24 miles per gallon city, 31 miles per gallon highway. The PHEV gets a combined 3.6 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers. That's 64 miles per gallon equivalent. And in alphabetical order, our final pick goes to the Toyota RAV4 with three powertrain options gas, hybrid, and plug-in hybrid. This is the king of this category. It mm. outsells all of the others. If you take pickup trucks like F-150s and Rams and all that out of the picture, this is the best-selling passenger vehicle in North America. Yeah. And for good reason. It has Toyota's name behind it. It's got great resale value. Yeah. Toyota's been at hybrids a long time, and the plug-in has the best range. It does. And so pros, it's spacious, it's comfortable. It's going to meet all of your family needs. There's enough rear seat leg room. Um, there's also plenty of cargo space. And Toyota has finally added a power passenger seat with a height adjustment. That was a uh, a big negative that we didn't like. So it was good to see that they added it. And now there's extra tech as well. You have an available larger screen. You have an available 12.3 inch digital driver display and standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the RAV4. On the downside, well, we like to call the interior a little bit industrial looking. Yes. It's like, if you look at that Kia and then you look at this, 
you know, that's really quite plush looking. The RAV4 has an industrial kind of look. Yeah. It's it's kind of frumpy actually, but it's yeah. it's functional. I mean, they do functional well. And I think that they could really do more color options for their interior. I think the black looks a little bit dull. Another con is the gas model is loud. What? Um, what? I mean, That's a big complaint. <laughs> and I think that's why they sell so many hybrids is because the hybrid is definitely quieter. It's a good hybrid. Um, it's matched to an eCVT. Uh, and I think Toyota does a really great job. I think the plug-in hybrid, I would put the plug-in hybrid best in class. It has incredible range. It's smooth. It's the quietest of the RAV4. And, and it's powerful. It's powerful. It's also, I would put it in the class of unobtainium. You can't get one. The, the waiting lists for the plug-in are a couple of years long. That's what we're hearing anyway. Yeah. Uh, the RAV4 hybrid is very hard to get, but it really is, if you can't get the plug-in, the RAV4 hybrid is the one to get. It's quieter, it's smoother, and it is class-leaning when it comes to fuel economy mm -hmm. in this category for hybrids. So Toyota's been at hybrids a long time. It really is the one to beat for fuel economy and another reason why it's the best seller. I also really like the price point of the RAV4 Hybrid. Toyota offers a variety of trims for different budgets and I think that's really important for people who want to start saving money at the pumps. The plug-in hybrid, on the other hand, in Canada is very expensive and that top trim is really bordering on the price of a pure electric vehicle. So some people will question, is it really worth it to get a plug-in hybrid? hybrid versus a full battery electric vehicle. The gas model has a 2.5 liter four cylinder paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, 203 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. The hybrid has a 2.5 liter four cylinder matched to an eCVT. It produces 219 combined horsepower, standard all wheel drive. The plug in hybrid, the Prime, with 68 kilometers, 45 miles of range, has a combined 302 horsepower and standard all-wheel drive. Let's get into the price range. Canada first, followed by the U.S. The base gas model starts at $36,000 and goes to $47,500. The hybrid is just under $39,000 and goes up to just under $50,000. The plug-in hybrid is $54,000 and goes all the way up to an eye-popping sixty-four dollars in the United States, the gas model starts at $28,500 and goes just under $37,000. The hybrid, $31,500 to just under $40,000. And the plug-in hybrid is $43,500 to just over $50,000. Here's the fuel economy. The gas model is rated at 8.8 .8 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7.1 on the highway. That's 27 miles per gallon city, 33 miles per gallon highway. The hybrid has 5.8 liters per 100 kilometer city, 6.3 on the highway. That's 41 miles per gallon in the city, 38 on the highway. And the plug-in hybrid is rated at 2.5 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers, an amazing 94 miles per gallon equivalent. So there's our top five. Type below, let us know what your favorite pick is. Which one would you buy? Put them in order for us. We'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get into it. The honorable mentions. Up first is the Mazda CX-5 and actually is a real favorite of mine. I like the handling. It's a little bit of a firmer suspension and heavier steering. That doesn't always work for everyone. And a big complaint is that the seats are uncomfortable. And of course, there is no electrified option. No, there's no hybrid. There's no plug-in. There's none of that. No. They do have a base gas model and a turbo. So they've gone the other way. Everyone's going to hybrids. Yeah. They have a more powerful and thirsty. By the way, if you're choosing between the, the regular gas and the turbo, the regular gas, way better fuel economy in our day-to-day uh, -day driving. Mm -hmm. The other negative of the CX-5 is that it's not that big. The back yeah. seat is smaller than many of the cars we've looked at already. The cargo area as well. So to Andrea's point, you can get a powerful one, great handling, 
but no electrification and no. it's small. Up next is the Subaru Forester. You've got that greenhouse effect, large windows, large doors, making it easy to get your family in and out of the vehicle. Unfortunately, no electrified option. We hear for 2025 that a hybrid may be coming. We look forward to that. One of the biggest complaints we hear from viewers about the Forester is that there is no hybrid and Subaru is behind. We also find the cargo area in the Forester to be a little bit smaller than some of the other competitors. But it's a champ. If you live in an area where you get a lot of snow, mm -hmm. you put on a good set of winter tires and this will just eat all of that up. It's comfortable. It's got comfortable seats. It's got an adequate cabin. Yeah. It's a good vehicle. It's just a step behind some of the others. And it's priced well. That all-wheel drive system is excellent. And finally, the Ford Escape with three powertrain options, a gas model, a hybrid, and a plug-in well, hybrid. Wait, but wait, Andrea, didn't we say we like some of the others because they have hybrids and plug-ins? Yes. Why isn't in the Ford on the list? Ford has been plagued with reliability issues. And so when we recommend a vehicle, we don't like to say we recommend the Escape, but be careful. The new ones are better. The older ones had problems. Here's the good news about the Escape Hybrid and plug-in hybrid is that most people are telling me that you can get one, that they are available. We do like the way it drives. Mm -hmm. Every time we drive an Escape, we like it. And for 2024, they've updated it with a new look on the outside, new tech on the inside. So it is up to date. They've done a good job of the way it drives, mm, but there you go. Yeah, and also the plug-in hybrid. Some want an all-wheel drive model. It is just front-wheel drive. And uh, so some will go with other options like the RAV4, the Tucson, or the Sportage, which are standard all-wheel drive for the plug-in hybrid. Wow, that's quite a list, Andrea. Yeah. Top five mm -hmm. uh, in alphabetical order. What's your number one pick? How would you rank them? Leave all your comments below. And yeah. don't forget to follow Andrea at motormouth underscore Andrea. Uh, for Instagram to get a sneak peek and what else do they need to do? Yeah, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'd love you to watch all of our videos. Stay tuned for more top fives coming your way.